to order at 7 11. Let's see, we've got everyone here. All right. So, first up, we can just um, approve meeting minutes. So, I sent them out from um, the, was it June 18th, which was just our brainstorm. So, I just kind of cleaned up a little bit our notes and dumped in our brainstorm notes in there. And then from July 2nd, and that was the meeting where we took all the votes um, to grant Travis authority for everything. So. so I'll make a motion to approve those meeting minutes. Second. All right. Any questions from anyone on those? Cool. All right. So then we need a roll call vote. So Hanson, yes. Ode, yes. LaVault, yes. Dumont, yes. Shainer, yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. Then, so first up on our agenda is the trails committee. So we do have them in the audience. So Travis, can you pull over? Yep. Yep. Catherine's there. And Sam as well. Uh, just Catherine. Just Cat. Yep. Uh, all I do is allow them to talk. Right. So Cat, can you hear us? Can you talk? I I can hear you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay, great. So uh, thank you very much for the time today. Um, I just wanted to, uh, it's been a while since I've updated you on how things are going. And I just wanted to give you a quick project update and to have you ask any questions and provide any answers that might come up. So um, we're referring to phase two project. Uh, this is related to the uh, Peninsula Trail. Um, and phase two specifically is the bridge and boardwalk work. And um, I can't actually remember the last time we met, so I may overlap in information, but um, we have, uh, we went and received quotes from engineering firms to do uh, the engineering surveying that we needed for a bid to go to bid for the boardwalk and the bridge for the Peninsula Trail. And so we've been working with Beals and Thomas since earlier this year, and they are in the process uh, where we are in the schedule is they are preparing um, an NOI and to submit to the Southboro Conservation Commission and the Framingham Conservation Commission to get approvals for um, to move forward with the work. So we need to go through this process, then we submit, they submit to Mass DEP, um, and then the, the permit will be granted to allow the, well, like if, if, if it's all positive, the permit will be granted and we will move forward uh, with the bid. So right now we are, um, Travis, I did, I was delayed in sending that reply. Thanks for prompting me. So we may have missed a deadline for Framingham, just full transparency, but I'm gonna reach out to Framingham tomorrow and say, Super sorry, it's only a day, so maybe or day or two, maybe they will still accept the the, the package so we can get on the 9-4, uh, September 4th hearing date. And for Southboro, their deadline is Monday, so the hearing date would be September 12th. Um, and so if all goes well in the hearings and we don't need to come back again, then the timeline, you know, will go from there. Um, what we're proposing is um, what I've heard from Beals and Thomas is that we would be going through this hearing process and then we would hopefully receive an order of conditions in September. We have heard word that they are a bit delayed, so that timeline is pending their uh, Mass DEP's ability to get through the review and there aren't any issues with the permit application. And then we would advertise and there Beals and Thomas, they're at the same time putting together the bid documents. Now, just as a reminder, we did go to bid for this project last spring and um, it was actually in March. And um, we had 26 firms pull the bid, but it wasn't accepted that we got some feedback after, after no one placed uh, or put a proposal in that they said, um, you should go ahead and do the engineering um, services do the uh, engineering survey ahead of time, include that in the bid documents, and then go to bid. Um, so that's what we've done this year. And so um, we hope to go to bid in September. Bids due mid-October. Now, what they've proposed for a timeline is, is obviously tentative, but for example, bid advertised on the 25th, 
proposals due by the by the uh, October 16th. And coming back to that, I'm curious about the commission's um, experience with bids and times you you allow for proposals to come in, because that seems like a, a really short turnaround time. And I want to make sure we're giving contractors enough time to pull together a thoughtful bid. Um, so I'd like to hear from you on that. Then the finalizing um, contract finalization and successful bidder in the end of October, um, and they can place the order for structure for the structures, which is the prefab bridge and boardwalk. Um, and then what they're they've contacted the bridge manufacturer just to get a sense of if you placed an order, what the timeline is for basically ordering. So the order would be um, placed in late October, and the structures would be ready in. Um, January and could be shipped and then construction early spring. Um, that's a little bit pushed back of a timeline than we had hoped for, but due to a lot of variables, that's where we're at. Um, and the money that we're using for the bid and the that part of the project is going to be this uh, Community Preservation Act money. So that does not have a this year deadline. Um, so that's separate. And what we're using ARPA funds for currently is to uh, pay Beals and Thomas for the engineering piece of it. So that's where we're at um, for phase two. So I'll stop and let you ask some questions and maybe you can comment also on the length of time a bid should advertise in a perfect world or imperfect world as we are in. <laughs> I think we've typically done like, I think there's like a standard. I think it's like a two week bid is standard, but you could always like, if you're worried about it, you could always do something where like we have a, or you have a deadline for questions, like an interim deadline and then you can gauge interest and then have a deadline like two weeks after that for final submissions. But like, yeah, Travis, what do you think? Um, yeah, I've done it a variety of ways. Um, you can kind of construct it the way you want. I would say two weeks is probably standard, like you're right, but you can, I've done things that have been shorter than that, uh, but yeah. That's some pressure on people, isn't it? Like, we <laughs> just, I'm a little sensitive because we we had a failed whatever. It's I guess we shouldn't call it a it, it was a failure. We didn't have a, a proposal, um. So I want to make sure like this is it. Yeah, it also depends on like timing. So we have put plenty of bids out and got nothing, mm -hmm. and we were shocked. We waited six weeks, put it back out, and got like tons of bids. Really? So like, yeah. You could put it out for two weeks, see what happens, and then put it out again, or even like wait closer to spring and put it out. Um, it's what we've done in the past to get a better response. Yeah, one of the replies we got back was also timing, like it wasn't enough time to pull together the docs, but I think that had to do more with the engineering services that do take yep. a lot of time to figure out. So if we are including that, do you think two weeks is reasonable for a firm to be able to pull together like, okay, so they basically need to put together a bid for, you know, project manager, the construction of the bridge. It's just the pricing walk. then. Yeah. yeah. So that I should think. be pretty reasonable, you think? Okay. I think so. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you. Um, any other questions on that I can answer for anybody? I don't have any, thank you. Okay. Um, we is have, this, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was, okay, I was gonna say, is this like the last piece of it? Like once this is done, then the that connecting trail will be done or is there still more? Yes, that should be the last piece of it. We have at the same time running in parallel phase one, which we're finishing up that's related to the Mass Trails grant. So um, just to recap, for anyone who may not have been on the commission at that time, last spring we put in, that would be the 2023 spring, um, we put in a fencing, uh, the fencing around the riser shaft. So now we're working on the signage, um, interpretive signs along the trail. And this will be our last um, piece. It's due, it needs to all be done by the end of December. And we did run into a matching issue. So when we proposed our initial grant, we received a quote from DPW um, to do uh, to install two parking ADA parking spots for us, which they did do. The quote came in at like uh, twenty one thousand dollars, but when we got the actual expenses, and we did go through three DPW superintendents since then. So, to to in all honesty, there's just I'm sure different interpretations of 
of how that might go down. But um, we basically got the expenses when when they tallied it for us came up to like 6,000. So we're a little short, um, but we have a good plan for that because we also have, um, we want to pave those spots and we have approval to do so and money now to do so. So we would like to, and we've reached out to our, consult, our engineering firms to get quotes for paving. Um, so we want to, if we can pave those spots this, you know, in this time frame, that will cover the match that we need to um, to do. So that was a little bit of a, you know, a bump, but I think we have a good plan for dealing with the bump. And if all goes well, then we'll have uh, matching funds um, to uh, satisfy the grant. It will be in good, good shape. Awesome. Yeah. And the interpretive signs we've started working on, we're basically highlighting um, a few things. One is one sign is going to be focused on the building of the dam, um, really getting into some of the history, like what was there before, you know, the 140 homes were uh, relocated or destroyed um, during, you know, I don't want to use the word destroyed. That's not the right terminology, eminent domain. They, they took the homes to make this happen. There were a lot of engineering feats, you know, who were these people and then who built the dam, like the uh, immigrants who built the dam and understanding about those people. So really highlighting the history and celebrating um, everyone who, participated in that and and how much of a big engineering feat it was at the time um so that's part of it and then the other part is you know what is a watershed why do we need watershed and what does it do so there's going to be different aspects we're going to hit on a few different um and then also touch base with mwa to see we'd like to kind of talk a little bit about the infrastructure in the right way in the way that they would like us to because we're very sensitive about not advertising how to take it down <laughs> so what we'd like to do is like, what would they like to see as far as like, oh, MWA manages this and this is, you know, this is how this works and that kind of stuff. So these are some of the topics that we're going to be working on. So we have some draft language now and a sign vendor that we have chosen. So that's our very next phase for phase one. And so that should be done by the end of this year. Um, and then phase two now looks like it's extending into 2025. Awesome. That's that's good stuff. Yeah, Kat, Kat's been great. I know I've only been here for a little under two months, but she's taken a lot of time to come in and meet with me and then walk through some of these projects. I think it's fantastic how active they are and everything they're doing. So, and I know Tim's worked really hard with them in the past. So um, she's been great kind of walking me through everything so I can have a good understanding of what they're trying to accomplish and do. And I appreciate it. Cool. Thank you. And thank you for your help and for the commission's support and um, guidance throughout the process we hope this is the final long you know stretch and we get across the finish line and we're working towards that goal awesome okay thank okay you. yeah well yeah. nothing else i will awesome. let you yeah. this and thank you again. thank you very much for coming yeah I, Jen, I know I mentioned it to you. I just want to mention to everybody that at 7.30, I just have to go off camera. I'm going to stay on the call. I just, I need to get my son. <laughs> so I'll be on the call. <laughs> no worries. All right. So let's see. We have capital updates and discussion next on our agenda. Um. Do you want to just like update Travis on the conversation you had with Jason? Yeah, uh, real quick. So what I had a, a kind of a preliminary discussion with uh, Jason, just he took some time out of his day to, to kind of walk through the capital process for me um, and how it's worked. And, and Jen's been fantastic and sent me what we submitted last year. So I have that to work off of. Uh, but um, one of the things that um, he had talked about was obviously kind of bleeds into the next topic would be the Neary school and when that comes on and the, how that impacts fields. Um, and they, and another topic, um, is that the capital is done. It, I think the due date's the end of this month. Um, so we have to kind of make some decision decisions on what we're going to, um, submit. And if we are going to stick with, um, I think what we have coming in FY 26, uh, for capital discussion, but, um, Jason had, um, had, had recommended maybe um, ramping up, the, and I know we've done some work in the past, the Choate Field Turf possibly as uh, the next turf field um, in town um, with the possibility of the Neary School Field um, coming offline in the next year or two for the school. Um, so I think having some discussion about um, that as capital and what we want to do and, and how that whole process works and if we want to alter our capital I did look at last year's and it looked like we had um, voted and agreed on everything in September. 
So we're still kind of on that timeline, although I don't know if the capital timeline got moved up a little bit uh, before we'll have a chance to vote. Uh, but I just wanted to put it out there and, and get the commission's feedback and thoughts. And um, and Jen, if there's anything else that I'm missing, and I know on Monday, uh, you, me and Joanna are going to meet as well uh, with Jason as well. Yeah, we're meeting with him to talk about Neary. Um, yeah, I think that, I mean, I think the big thing for me is that we were, we did a lot of work on the choke design and we have multiple options. I think we had one we landed on that we liked. Yes. And then it got tabled because of all of the work for public safety. And there are questions and concerns about what would the runoff do or what would it change or would it impact them or what space would they need? Um, and now that's fully really settled. Um, and if capital is suggesting we go back and look at it, like if we have their support, um, there is the question. And I, I know it was like discussed at some of the Neary meetings that mm. I actually did not go to, but um, that the Neary grass fields over behind the playgrounds, like all that area and probably that ball field will be offline while they're doing construction, which we have a lot of soccer on those fields. Um, mm. So there's a question of like, do we, do we attempt to turf choke now and try to get that through and funded? And I think like CPC could partially be a funding source and stuff like that so that we have fields that will give us more use time and they're already under lights knowing that we are not sure the status of Neary and that could like, that could really disrupt soccer for soccer and even softball. And can you just connect the dots for me between yep. making the Neary fields offline and turfing show it? Mm. Yeah. So I guess in my, my mind, the biggest thing is that the choke fields are used and abused and they get like, they get destroyed really fast and okay. when it rains, it is wet, right? Okay. And then they destroy them even more. Mm -hmm. So the the thought behind and why we're looking at Cho is that, so we've got lights there already. If you okay. put down the synthetic turf, yeah. you get yeah. like more playing time. And mm -hmm. when it rains, it doesn't matter. You can still play. So a lot of the ages yeah. will still play even through light rain and okay. you won't hurt the turf. Okay. And then having turf with lights means we can extend and get even more hours on those fields. Okay, so you're just getting more overall playing time between being more resilient to like weather conditions, and then you're getting extended hours, yep. which I guess, you know, the teams would have to be okay with playing later Yep. under the lights. And so it would just have to be a part of like the field rotation schedule that is put out. Yes. when potentially the Neary fields come offline. Yes. So, okay. And how much is like, is this already in our budget? Like, do we already have money for this? Or is this going to be a new ask at a town meeting in order to turn? I think that that would be like, what are other ways we could fund it? Right. Um, or this so is where I, I think the, yeah. the quick answer there, Jen, is it is it in our budget? It's in our capital request. Right. Yes. So yes. like, so it's in the plan. It's when they ask us, what do you want to do over the next five, 10 years? It's in there. Yep. Um, would it have to be approved to town meeting? Absolutely. 100%. Um, it may have to go through multi, as Jen mentioned, like uh, portions of it may be uh, handled through CPC. Um, there are rules and regulations over what can and cannot, but there are portions of it that can go through CPC. Mm -hmm. um, and then there, you know, we've always kind of looked at it as, um, there should be an element of donations and uh, fundraising to complement it to minimize the amount of cost the town would have to um, contribute to the to the actual uh, implementation. So, would the fundraising come from the front of? No, the well, but so we haven't gone through the whole we in the past, and this is, we I can't remember what years we did this, Kristen, but. Um, the fundraising would have to involve a, um, I can't remember the name of the entity, but you'd want an entity that has the appropriate nonprofit designation to collect the funds, um, whether it's the friends of, or if we have to, would have to establish another one to specifically for this particular project that would have to be sort of decided and determined. 
Um, but yes, it would have to be, they have to go to one of those entities. We have not gone down the road of, of um, the, the logistics, the infrastructure, the order of play to make this work. All we've done so far is um, determine that at all of the locations in town, this is the one that's most suitable. It has the lights uh, already in place. It wouldn't uh, impact uh, neighbors in, in that respect. It's already fit for use, so there's no change of use. Like it clears a lot of what would be theoretically zoning issues. Um, and then we've also um, uh, done the preliminary, uh, we'll call it very preliminary studies over as to how could it actually be deployed? What size fields could you fit in there? How could the fields be structured? Uh, and so we were able to validate that you could fit the largest, um, you could fit a compliant field for the largest uh, soccer requirement, so 11 v 11. Uh, you could also put in um, a softball field, you know, one of those fields that does not have a mound. Um, the one that sort of, if, if you've ever, if you've been out there yet, and you may not have been, depends on sort of the age of your kids, but the uh, location that would look the closest to it is one at Medway High School. Uh, it's, I think it's, um, it's named after one of the students there, Hanlon, Hanlon Field there is a similar, has a similar construct where they've got a dual use or multi-use really, where you've got the softball field capability as well as uh, soccer, and then you can play long, and then you can turn it sideways so that you can have multiple kids sizes depending on the, so really sort of, um, for lack of a better word, frugal, like how much can we get <laughs> Like how much bang for the buck could we get for the space? And and this was this is sort of the the one. But we sort of where we've taken it so far is is that that's the site that was is most likely. Let's put a placeholder in the plan. But other than that, you know, we don't have a project plan. We don't have order operations. We haven't gone off to ask anyone for any money. We haven't like that. All that would have to be um, worked on. So fast track is a relative term. Yeah. 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 No, that's what I was I trying to get add. at. I heard the word fast track and I was like, oh, there's been work done. Like, let's just hit the go button. But fast track really is, there's no fast track. We have to get our house in order in order to put Yeah, I think fast track in his mind was, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, if, if, you, if you guys know Travis or Jen, but I think we put this out a couple of years. Like, I think this was like a 26, 27 ish on our plan. And so yeah. I think, you know, in terms of fast track, Jason's saying, hey, actually, you would help us out if you could figure out the field issue sooner. Now, um, yeah. the other piece of it, to be honest with you, is, is, you know, I haven't been keeping up on the the uh the Neary stuff um you know candidly I've you know my got one I'm dropping off at college on Thursday and and the other <laughs> one's going to be a, a junior uh at the high school on Thursday so I'm um, a little in a, a different stratosphere as far as uh as sort of as that talk was concerned but you know the breaking of ground on that like we wouldn't have a field issue until there was breaking of ground on that property and I don't think that's Correct. imminent no so there's, there's some room for like how to, I think the thought uh, is is like but so say Neary's three years out of breaking ground, being generous, maybe. Um, I, I think too. But again, like this is something that hopefully will um, not be in all the meetings. We'll get a little bit more clarity, I guess, on right. Monday in order to see like what timeline we're kind of like driving to as well. I thought mm -hmm. one of the reasons that it sends up red flags for me is um, I think the proposal sounded to me a little bit sooner than what I had thought. Um, I thought it was two years. I thought it was two years out, not three. And so if it takes something like a year to get our like pegs in a square for the turf, you know, that's just, it's, it's helpful to know when they're thinking of so that we have a date to back into. Hundred percent. If 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 you guys are talking to him on Monday and and can uncover that, that would be yep. hugely helpful. Um, I you know this is the type of project from you know the discussions that and the research we had. I uh, Kristen and I met with the the folks in Shrewsbury that had put in one of their fields and had talked to some other folks who were willing to share. Um, the longest part of the process is the. Uh, gathering of the funds and the approvals and, and that piece. The actual construction is the might be the shortest part of the, <laughs> of the project, right? So um that and and especially since I think uh in our we've had a 
you know, amongst us so far, our commitment has always been we have to find a way um, to minimize the actual impact to the town. So we are, you know, we benefit from, and I can't, I can't speak, and we'll have to go back and as we go, we, we should talk to the folks at Algonquin that worked on that project. But, you know, I think in this particular case, they didn't really uh, seek out uh, uh, non-town funds, and that might have been part of the issue with the Southboro and the Northboro and how to make it all work. Given the location of the of the site, like it should be a very attractive site to hopefully um, source folks that would be willing to sponsor the field or sponsor the signage or sponsor what whatever like bricks we talked about. We like so um, you know a lot of the work I think we had done on this was pre COVID and obviously COVID really put a damper on some of what we could think about there. But, you know, the, again, it's, yeah, we, it's, it's exciting to think about, and it would be great if you guys could get a little bit of context on, you know, what does it mean to accelerate? No, that's, that's great. I think in 20 in 26, just so you guys have a dollar figure in mind, I just pulled it up. It's $2.1 million for the project itself. Um, and that's, that's what we have in FY 26. And then we have $360,000 for uh, Mooney Finn soccer field design and rebuild. Um, in 26 though, but that's in red and looks like it got tabled. Um, but just some context. Yeah, I've seen every community kind of does it a little bit differently. In Natick, they had a, a unique one where they, we were on, in an old elementary school and they partnered with youth soccer um, on that field. And they, I think um, youth soccer was able to um, and give us an upfront uh, donation. I forget of how much. And then we gave them like, okay, weekdays, we're going to give you from four to 7 PM. And then on weekends, we're going to, we're going to give you dedicated time. Yeah, that's your kind of your field, but it's a the town gets a turf field out of it, and youth soccer uh, contributes. So, and everybody kind of does it. A lot of a lot of towns will do a, a performance bond, and then they'll 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 use user fees similar to what we do for Memorial nine one one nine and eleven field. Yep. No, but, that's great to hear, Travis. The um the benefit here as well for maybe folks who don't appreciate it to some extent is is that this you know this is this would be town town controlled. Um, the nine eleven field is is really it's um we're using um, really? MDRC yeah. or whoever it is, and, and they've imposed um, guidelines on, yeah. on uh, you know, how we can deploy the use of that field. So we can't do such a, a prioritization or favoring if there is a contribution, yep. it's not permitted under our uh, agreement. Makes sense. Yeah, everybody does it a little bit differently, but yeah, definitely. Yep. Okay. Um, just one more question on this before we move is there any decisions we need to make on this particular topic tonight or no Je i don't think if we need to decide yeah, yeah. If, our, if our capital is, needs to be submitted on the 30th how how would that go for next steps for us like if i know and that sneaked up on me obviously being in my six yeah. seven, and J jason emailed me and said capital is due on august 30th and you're like all right I mean, uh, I, I think the only the only thing I could think of there would be, and, and my, it would be helpful. Can we dust off the just, the last round of work that was done? So we had engaged with, um, I can't remember who we engaged with, but the same people we always engage with, um, who did the sort of here are your options, here's how this field could. They did the the drones, did the measurements, and kind of figured it all out for us. Maybe there's a, a cost refresh, um, and then um, you know. Then at least you have the most current information. I, I would imagine that would, and, and it would be good to share with those of you who haven't seen the the work that was done previously, just to to get a sense of what was there. Okay. I, I just want to add to what John said. Um, I mean, I, I have nothing much more to add other than just to emphasize the the significant amount of work in the fundraising. Um, when we met with the people in Shrewsbury, they literally had staff a couple people working on this that worked with the school system. So this other committee that we would need would, would need to be formed because we cannot, obviously as the commission, we, we cannot um, raise funds. So again, that, that's another just piece to consider that we would need to form that committee that we would then need to staff that committee, which, you know, getting volunteers is always not easy. Um, so I just want to emphasize that when we're considering timelines. Yep. So is that something that we need to talk to the select board about is 
the creation of a fundraising subcommittee for this? Um, is, is, that who it, is that yeah. who it's the room? It wouldn't be them, no. no. I don't think so. Okay. Um, so I think that um, I actually, I literally just found a zip file I'm going to send to all you guys of the old choke files. Um, so I'll send you that link. I think you have to download open it because it's huge files. Um, but I think that, I think it was, I think it was PAR that did that for us, right? Yeah. Um, so I almost think like it might be a, would PAR just kind of like, almost like give us a free like, update. Like, yeah. yeah. Just give us a part? rough. Yeah. That was one of the last okay. ones we did with them. Okay. Um, um, and then we like moved to Activitas. I think. Would you like me to reach out and see if they'll do like a cost refresh for it? Yeah, that, just really. Yeah. Look, and honestly, yeah. Travis, honestly, if you've got somebody else who might be willing to do it, you know, I think what we're looking for here would be a sanity check, right? So like, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like we, they, we don't need anyone to tell us we need any, you know, more uh, uh, check the tonnage on the fill yeah. or, you know, that kind of stuff. Really, it's like if you look at it, there's going to be a cost, a quantity times a cost. Yep. Assume the quantities are all good. Can you look at the cost and just say, oh, you know what? Uh, uh, labor per hour is now $43, not 41 or whatever it could be. And then you get yeah. a, you get kind of like a, I don't know, a little bit better than the quick and dirty because we know all the cues, but you get a little bit more information on the prices. Yeah, I can definitely do that. And so when we meet on Monday with um, Jason to talk about Neary, we could also, because he's also in capital, we could also kind of like, I wanted to ask him a little bit more to get a feel for like, so we're like, if we were to try to move this forward now, is capital going to support this? Are you going to come back and tell us to wait? Like, I want to get a little bit more from him because if capital is willing to support this, then like we have an opportunity to start looking at move it, getting this rolling. Um, Cause they are like, there was a lot of, hesitancy and then we kind of got blocked a little bit last time we tried to move this forward so if there's an appetite to um it would be helpful if they would be backing us so yeah and maybe we can ask them for an extension because that way if we do get our ducks in a row we can meet in september and then vote on adopting the capital plan and then submit it maybe mid-september yeah i think that's what happened last time i think like it's hard to do these end of august deadlines yeah, with people and travel and kids and um, I was looking for our capital, which I know I sent to you, Travis, and then now yeah. I can't find it. Um, I can, I can send you the link if you want. Sure. Cause we could just pull it up and look at it too. Where the heck is my capital? Uh, yeah, in retrospect, I probably should have sent that out before. That's okay. We could just pull it up right here for a minute and then we can get a vote. I, see. I just sent it to you. Okay. Um, all right, I don't have it yet. Okay, there it is. All right, I think. Okay, do I have. Yes, I can. Uh, can you give me screen share permissions? I most certainly can. Participants. I'm going to make you the co-host. There you go. Okay. Cool. Let me pull this up. Come on, share. Okay. Oh, I can't share because I don't have all the permissions. Um, uh, do you want me to do it? If you can, yeah, please. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I can. Sorry, everybody. Hmm.
Awesome. All right. I'll also forward this to you guys as well so you can pull up the link to read it more closely. All right, here we go. I don't know why it's not sending. I'm striking out here left and right. <laughs> I know. Why not by night? Sorry, everybody. All right. Literally, it is not sending. I know. I don't know why Zoom is not publishing. But you guys should have it in your your town email. So I was, I'm mostly looking to see, like, what's in our – it does look like – so we had – we initially earmarked funding in 24 for a choke design, um, which we clearly did not spend. Um, but I'm looking for, so FY, yeah. Okay. I think that this is my doc. So this was, um, uh, fiscal year asks, we always get confused with the dates on these, but we did, we had, um, well, we were expecting to do Lumblad work, which now we know is the dog park. Um, so we could update that. And in 26, no. we had earmarked the 2 million. Can you guys see that? No. Yes. Yeah, we can. Um, okay. Yeah. So I'll just, I'll just go to 26. Can you see that? So yep. um, that's where we see if I can zoom out. Uh, that 2100. Or, yeah, so 2. would fundraising help negate some of the 2.1 million? Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. Yes, completely. And then also, um, I think that is like, there was a higher end of the range, right? Like some of these were like, I don't know. I think it included like more plumbing down there and things like that. Right. So like, this was like, when they design it, they give us like a ton of stuff. So yeah. I think this was the there higher was, end yeah, of the there estimate. Was, there was options. Do you turf the whole, do you turf only portion? Do you put up netting? Is there mm -hmm. a wall? Like you, you can, I mean, it had like all, all kinds of stuff in there, which again, the primary objective at that point in time was just like, hey, what could actually fit into the right. field? Um, yeah, CPC might be a good, I know there's other communities, I don't know what the parameters are for CPC, but I know there's other communities that use it for um, CPC for turf. I don't know if yep. it's just materials and not the install or whatever. It's, it's, uh, I think there are clear rules on it. I think it yeah. materials is the, I think you're correct on materials and, and maybe drainage, uh, possibly some of the drainage work. So, but that, yeah. that's going to be a slam dunk that, that one they'll have the book and they'll know, okay, these are the things that we can or, or we can't put in there. So um, we shouldn't be in the dark on that. Yeah. Is this the is this the most recent one, Jen? I think this is the one that Jason. This is the one that Jason sent me, um, and I think this is the one that Jen. I think this is the same one that Jen sent me. Um, yeah, I kind of do feel like we might have had another version, but the, maybe Tim is had the dog it. Dog park on here. Um, great. down below. It's down below. It's oh, it down okay. there. Yeah, keep going. There it is. The six sixty nine. 205 yep uh, yeah that's Sounds not the dog like. park though that was future use decision so yeah um i i i feel like this is um maybe it's outdated i'll, I'll try to go through yep. and figure out if i have a new one but um as well it might be in the minute wouldn't we have attached it to the minutes last year as well jen or or no we should have yeah we should have linked to it i'll look at the minutes um, okay I mean, this is, I, I would call this like, you know, 85%. We, it, it's really just about, in some cases we were asked to move buckets around and, yep. um, you know, there was, you can see that the Neary fields were going to need remediation at some point anyway. So what should happen is as a result of the work that they're going to do, they should be factoring in that they're going to have to rebuild, especially if they're going to use those fields as part of the, 
whatever they're going to do to make it happen, like they'll have to include in their budget, the restoration of those fields. So they're, so that will come up. I really think that that's my out. concern is that they have not. They've taken well, all of that. Great. Um, um, so that's part of, it. but that's part of what I'm hoping we could talk about on Monday. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the Lundblad um, rebuild was never, was obviously we're in FY, we're wrapping up FY 20 or uh, we're yeah. going. To, yeah. Okay. And that was the one where, why we're saying we think this is outdated version because last year we would turn that, it should have said dog park. And gotcha. that would have come down to basically nothing. Yeah. There would have been no ask of the town because it was gotcha. fully funded. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So, sorry guys, I'm still catching up because I wasn't here when you guys did <clears throat> all of that work for Choet. Um, so are we now saying that we potentially want to move the 2.1 to fiscal year 2025 or are we working on fiscal year 2025? It can't, it can't be 2025 um, okay. and yeah. absolutely not. Um, and then 2026 is that would, would mean commencing construction at some point starting, uh, it would be starting next July would be that budget year if I, if I get the years yeah. right. Okay. Um, it, it's probably not likely to be in that year either. You're probably talking at 27, um, but this is where okay. you, you need to get a little bit more information from Jason on, on where it is. Okay. Got it, got it. Thank you. It's always hard with the fiscal years versus the actual calendar years. I get yeah. I I get confused with the word fast track. <laughs> <laughs> We're pushing it out of here. <laughs> the word fast track is like throwing me off. I'm like, oh, do we need to move it up a year? Um, but now it sounds like we might be moving it out a year. I just think I think this is uh, my guess is this is um an older version and that we've already, the next version will actually have that number a little further out, but. All right. Well, I'll try to take a look at um, last September and see if there was one on there that's more recent. Perfect. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, okay, I stop sharing. Yep, yep. Very good. We can move on. So the Sorry. chairs we learned there. Um, okay. So then we've got on the agenda the 21 Highland Street Committee. Um, so I think this one is trying to be staffed again to start. Um, I think the question is who wants to volunteer to be on it? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think I think it is staffed. I think that they tried to have their first meeting. They didn't have a quorum, and so it never happened. Um, so we haven't missed anything. Yep. Um, and I guess yeah, we just we we need a volunteer. I'm not quite sure. Still, like um, in light of how far out the Nary building stuff is. And I think that this kind of like falls out of that. I'm not sure what that committee is gonna try to accomplish. Um, have you heard anything, Travis or Jen, as far as like, has there been any more movement on 21 Highlands or has it pretty much been shelved until some more progress is made on Nary? So all I know is I got an email asking who we nominate, like they needed a name because it's not like they're trying to spin it back up again this fall. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Same boat. I, I don't know. Um, obviously I'm, I'm still relatively new, but I, I haven't, I haven't done a ton to add, unfortunately either. Yeah. Like, other than I was on the same email Jen was on. <laughs> yep. Nobody's coming okay. to the office with a ticket measure or anything yet. You, you, you haven't seen that. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> um, facilities have come by. Uh, facilities is doing a, a few upgrades with like heat and like some painting, uh, but nothing that is uh, uh, nothing substantial um, <laughs> that you're thinking of. I'll volunteer. Kristen. Okay. All righty. I will write back to them and let them know and CC you on that then, Kristen. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen.
No problem. Awesome. All right. Um, next up, we had the 9-11, the bond payment approval. Yeah, Brian, Brian approached me. This is something I think we do annually, but I, I know there was a mention about uh, taking it out of the revolving fund and getting the board's approval. So I, I just want to make sure we do this the right way. And before Brian was to take that out, make sure the board approves it. I think it's, I have it listed, I think at 45 grand uh, for FY24. Um, and I just want to make sure, which we certainly have enough to cover in the 9-11 fund. Um, but I want to make sure that um, the board's okay with that and approves it before we make that payment. How, how much was it again, did you say? 45. 45,000? Yeah. We had, there was a schedule. I don't know if he shared or shared the schedule with you, but okay. Is it in yeah. line with is the schedule? Is it sort of? Yep. That's in line okay. with the, the schedule payback, which I have going all the way into FY 34. Is that what you have? Yeah. 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 I believe that it makes sense. It's, I think it's a 15, it's 15 year bond, I think. Yeah. So I just, I know uh, Jen had mentioned it um, and I would just want to make sure that we do this the right way, obviously. Yeah, it's a, I mean, it's the, that revolving fund is there for one purpose only and that's to collect the fees and those fees are there to be remitted to to fund the, or to help repay the bond that the town floated to do the work. So, um, you know, we, one of the things we asked for a year or two ago, I can't remember when it was, Jen, was to actually get a schedule because yeah. they kind of just showed up every so often to be like, can you just give us some money? And so <laughs> getting the schedule helps sort of like nail it down yeah. and, and get some rigor around it. So um, if, if, if there isn't any questions, then, uh, then I can make a motion, Jen, to approve the distribution yeah. of revolving funds and the amount of uh, that was requested by the town accountant. Okay, yeah, 45,000. Um, sounds good, so I'll second that. Are there any questions on this? Okay. Um, so then we need a roll call vote. So Hanson, yes. Okay, yes. Laval, Lamont, yes. Shainer, yes. yes. All right. Okay, so we're good there. Um, and then I'll, I'll send out the link to like these draft meeting minutes. So if you want to use that, um, Travis, to let Brian know that we did vote to support it. Great. Thank and you. And then, yeah, and it typically goes into like this year's budget. And I don't think they actually pull the money until later, but they've already got the vote. So. Great. Thank you. Yeah, really, the, the execute, I mean, their execution is, they'll execute it. That's, you know. Yeah. Okay. Um. So next up, uh, cross country coach. Yeah, we put a cross country coach uh, in track on there. So we had um, me and Chris, me and Christina both being relatively new, and Christina going through what track was without um, without Tim and being solo. I think what we've discovered over the last few years, Joe, to his credit, Galan, our prior program supervisor, did a lot. I think his passion was coaching and track. Um, what we're uncovering is that he did a lot of the administration for. Scheduling, he would put together meets, um, practices, the coaches would ex execute it. Christina's done a fabulous job. She's really ramped up programming um, and, and done a lot. What we're kind of uncovering is that at the current capacity with what cross country and track is, um, we're, um, we're just not sure we have the bandwidth right now to take on like a middle school track program um, the way that Joe had did. Um, Christina's added more programming. Um, we were doing more community events. Um, she's done a fabulous job, but we'd still maybe like to try it, but maybe scale back or maybe like more of a rec program. But I wanted to get the commission's input on maybe um, like a, a possible coach um, that they might have in the pipeline um, that we can pull in or um, get their input on the program. Um, I know it's a popular program in the fall. I'm not dismissing that by any shape, um, shape or form. I want to make sure we continue to do it because I know it is popular, uh, but I just want to make sure it's the right fit. That's all. Yeah. So if anybody had any leads on coaches, uh, we would this, love to hear you out too. This is a, this is a complete, it's Kristen. This is a completely off the cuff idea. So feel free to tell me it's dumb, but 
I think about that rugby program, right? That was started essentially by high schoolers. And now we've like won the championship or something like, like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just wonder if, and now granted we're competing with the high school season, but so that doesn't necessarily work, but like, you know, do we look more and, and advertise a little bit? Was that an Eagle Scout project, the rugby? I'm trying to remember. Does anyone remember? I just know that it was started by. I believe it was. It was like, yeah, like a passion project by either that or someone. I forget. Um, That Rick kind of helped them support to get off the ground, but then like kind of like, you know, gave them (laughs) that push to go like fly by themselves. I think I think the middle school has done a good job developing their sports curriculum as far as what they offer. I do find it unique that track is under the rec umbrella, which is totally fine. Uh, But it's just like what we're uncovering is that Joe would like submit times to the state, organize meets, was at meet running meets. um, And with Christina, Christina doing summer camp, spring events, spring programming. Um, having the bandwidth to try to do all that now. Um, I, yeah, that, yeah. I don't you know if we would get the Do the families or the participants of the track program, do they pay like any sort of fee to help fund some of the administrative overhead costs? Uh, they, so they, we had two coaches on our payroll, um, last year. Um, and we, um, right now we just didn't know what the future of the program looked like. Um, so we decided to take like a little bit of a hiatus to try to maybe like this, the fall off or just to kind of evaluate things and see where we're at with the program. We did have coaches that were there coaching the program, um, between the two of them, I think we were paying, um, a pretty, a pretty good hourly rate, um, to be there to coach. Yeah, but I mean, like, do the students pay a fee to participate in track and field? That could help fund the coaches. They do. Uh, yes, yes, they do. Yep. Oh, okay. So my, I think the problem my, was is like the coaches reaction. weren't. Sorry. Sorry. No, no, go ahead, Jen. I was gonna say the coach, but the coaches weren't handling all of the overhead. Or I yes. think so. What we're what we're finding is like. Yes, they were showing up to coach, but there's a whole lot going on behind the scenes that Joe is doing and yes. because he was awesome. And now that he's not here, like we just, we can't take that on. So like yes. either the coaches yeah. would have to do that also, or else we need mm-hmm. to find a different way to run this program. That's, that's a better way to put it, Jen. Um, <laughs> the nail mad. Um, I, yep. we, we're, we're uncovering a lot of administrative things that Joe did that are beyond the coaching umbrella um, for what they need to do. So we're just trying to, We've had some good conversations with Gary, the principal um, at the middle school. Um, if you guys had anybody in the pinch that you knew would that would, might want to do a cross country program um, or helping us out, maybe do a running program, um, I, we can put it out to the the parents too. But um, I, I just want to. Gym teacher at the at Trottier that could like take this on and maybe bring it in house as like a program yeah. for the school. Yeah, oh. I just wanted to keep everybody in the fold. Yeah, my, my immediate. My immediate reaction is that, and, and I totally, Joe, this is not, I appreciate your position and Christina's position entirely. I think we have to, my immediate reaction is like, yeah, let's go out to the community. and Because the thing about that is, A, it's a feeder, right, into high school. And B, it, it's such a great sport for the kids that don't like the team sports, right? Mm-hmm. The kids that don't do soccer, don't do baseball, or, you know, whatever's going on in the fall that this is another outlet to make sure kids are getting recreation and maybe mm-hmm. those kids that didn't really conform to, or, you know, just don't really thrive or like team sports. I know so many kids that love running. So I, I totally appreciate your position and that you guys can't take it on, but I think we need to put like a full court press to see if there's some way we can find someone who might take it on a, to your point as a passion project or who has some skill that will help us get through this season. I just, I, I hate to think, of the potential loss mm-hmm. for the kids, especially those eighth graders going into high school. So, so Travis, just to confirm, I, I just want to make sure I understand the need. You have coaches, but you're short an administrative resource that would make sure the meets were coordinated, that information was submitted, that all paperwork was complete. You're not looking for another coach. No, we are looking for coaches. Coach. Yeah. Okay. So, are you looking for both? So, are you looking for both so, coaches yeah. and yeah. administrative help? Because yeah. I yes. you could bifurcate those if that was an issue and offer somebody some. You know, we we have part time people that work on the on the wrap programs, right? And so yeah. bringing in someone to do 
administrative work at however many hours a week it is to make this happen, um, that would help, you know, let the coaches be the coaches and and then have someone else just handle. And you may be able to get somebody more affordable to do that work than using your highly priced yeah. coaches to do yeah. that. Yeah, I think, so here, the other thing, like, so, and I spent a lot of time with Christine on this, the challenge is <laughs> like the administrative stuff is like, what were the kids' times? Like, where are they ranking? How do we get them registered and all of that? And the challenge really this spring was that like, the coaches didn't have it documented. So Christina was like, well, I can't register anyone if you, you don't tell me who to register. And it just became this back and forth. So ideally we could find someone who wants to own and run track and field and cross country, right? And if it means hiring like a coach and an assistant for them and they will own it fully and run it, that'd be great. But we just need to find those people that will just take this on um, and yeah. want to do that. And I think that like, without saying too much on a public meeting, like the, the coaching wasn't working well, right? So there was a lot of mixed feedback there. So that's why we're looking for so like to bring some new life into this program and new people and people to fully own it, like start to finish, so. Okay, so I mean, you're, I mean, basically you're either posting for these positions or you're looking for uh, a uh, a company that runs track for, for I mean, like, yeah. That'd like awesome. almost like the drama, <laughs> like the drama club, you know, the people who do the drama yeah. stuff and the like a best soccer for track. Yeah. 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 Like, I yeah. again want to ask, I feel like we don't have a satisfactory answer to this. Why is this not part of a school sports program? And have we had in the past a conversation with Gary about is this a like so I assume Trottier. I, I haven't had any kids yet that have gone through Trottier. I'm assuming Trottier has sports programs. Why is this not a district school program? And have we had those conversations to see if it could be a school district program? Why is this under recreation? <laughs> I don't know that history. Just to shed a little light, I mean, our middle school didn't necessarily have a lot of programs in that regard like we really want Tim will tell you I, I nagged him all the time about volleyball I, you know um and soccer just they just started soccer I think when my daughter went um into Trottier a couple of years ago so I, I think they're fairly new to that kind of yep. programming as well I, I am not necessarily saying they shouldn't I just wanted to shed a little light that it's, I think they're yep. fairly new to that game as well have we had any conversations with Gary? Yeah, so we we have, and I know Christina has, and I know, I think even Tim did. They were not willing to take this on. Like, maybe potentially in the future they would, but definitely not right now. So, like, the near term, they're not a solution. That was us. the answer I, yep. I needed. Yep. All right, thank you. Yep. I just wanted to check the box that, yes, yep. we have tried. The conversation has been had. They yes. said no, which means that, if we have a desire as a community to have this program, recreation needs to make it happen. Exactly, okay. yes. Thank you. Yeah, and when I talked to Gary briefly about it, I think my first my first or second week, um, and he, yeah, he didn't, he didn't, he, and they, he said maybe in the next year or two, he definitely didn't say like, we can technically take this on this year, but yeah, I share what Jen said, and just talking from Christina, there was a lot of administrative piece that fell on her um, this past spring and she was a rock star, but, um, yeah, just, uh, it, yeah, we're just looking at new blood. Yeah. So I guess if we, yeah, if we know anyone or like, this is like, if you've got like even, or like job descriptions or things like that, I guess we could be. Yeah. Could and, and just community. part of the conversation too, for job postings and stuff like that is, does this need to go to the board for approval as far as posting anything, or is that something we can go ahead and do so um, historically? We, no. No, because the vote we took in July gave you the authority to hire part-time staff. So yeah. you can, you don't need, a, we delegated it to you already. Yeah, yep. so under, and this staff would be under the revolving fund anyway. So yes. Yep. 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 Um, so yeah, so you would be able to like, you can advertise, you can publish it. I know that like um, the town's got places or Vanessa, if you want to like put it on certain boards, she has those accounts, but okay. otherwise you can, you can advertise, you can hire, make all the decisions yourself. Yep. Thank you. Awesome. We've got some 
serious runners in our town, right? Like, I think there's a few running clubs. So, you know, I know one group of mothers who get up way earlier than I could <laughs> go running. So I, I think the sooner that we could post something also, like, get understand what it is we're posting, you know, what what is it we're throwing out there, but the sooner the better to get it out even, because we might just find people in the community who are passionate about running, because there are so many people Um I mean, that might be an avenue we want to move on quickly to just to, to, you know, throw our line out there and see if we catch anything. Yep. Yeah, great. Thank you, everybody. I, I just did. Thank you for being my sounding board. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, All right. Um, so next up is CPC. So we currently don't have a rep because select board declined reappointing Kristen, even though we as a committee voted to put Kristen on the CPC. Because um, I don't agree with their policies. Yeah, which I feel or, like is sorry, a I don't agree weird. with all their positions. <laughs> I feel like it's a weird position to put us in because here we have a volunteer. We supported putting her on it and they rejected it. So I guess I was going to open it up to see, does anyone else want to volunteer for CPC to see if we can send someone else's name through and see if they would appoint them to the board? Sorry, guys. I said before, I don't think like that. I, CPC sounds like a lot of work, and I just, I'm not able to do that. I can't take it on. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. But, I mean, they've hosed this, Jen, right? Because we already have to fill two positions, and your yep. position needs to be filled, right? So, yep. um, and, they and, I mean, and they rejected one of our one of the yep. folks we have left. So, like, I don't know. Yeah. I, I think we have to tell them that we're open until we can repopulate. Fill some open rules. Okay, that's fair. And and, and I kind of half expected that to be our decision, honestly, tonight anyways. Um, there, there's going to be a citizen's petition at special town meeting to, because the way the law works, I actually don't even think they're allowed to, or the bylaws are interpreted. I'm not sure they have the right to do what they did. Um, there's this, the be sponsoring a um, citizen's petition to remove their ability to do that. I, as in, if you, as a commissioner, we as a commission elect someone to the CPC, then that should be it. Um, so it could be that come September 30th, I think is town meeting, that problem gets resolved for us, but okay. um, I believe that is what's happening. Okay, so we can, yeah, wait and see what happens there. I mean, shoot, the, uh, what was the other committee that hasn't been able to staff their position for like months and months and months? Like, so we're, um, uh, yeah. Like, I, I think we just, they just created this hole for us and we're actively looking for people to join and we should yep. just try to make sure that whoever comes along is somebody that would be interested in potentially in working on that too. Yes. And so along those lines, so actually, um, Johanna and I were just talking uh, like a week or so ago, two weeks ago, because I know we've been like putting out there trying to find more recreation commission members. And like, it's been crickets. We've gotten like, I yeah. like nothing. Um, so our current running hypothesis is, is that if anyone goes to like the town website, it doesn't look like there's any empty positions because we're technically still here. So we were, this is what we were discussing saying like, do we, do we actually need to resign and create like, the open roles on this to be able to go find people to fill them. Right. Are you saying um, create, cre you need to create at least if you create one, at least it gets posted. And if you have multiple people, yeah. all you need is one, right, Jen, if you sure. have right. one that people post yeah. to, then the fact that you don't have to do it at the same time. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah, I, exactly. It's, I mean, like, okay. Yep. <laughs> um, Very. And I actually don't know if the theory is good. I, I think that there's just a lack of volunteers, quite honestly. I don't, I don't know how much it really has to do with the website, but it's a theory. Like, we've tried a bunch of stuff. Yeah. I mean, I have blasted it out, like, everywhere that I can think of. I've blasted it out on social media. I've now gone to Vanessa Hale, so the select board can start, like, looking for people as well. And we've just... As of right now, there has been um, no interest that I know of 
I know that in the communications that I put online, I did direct them to you, Jen, and then you, Don, as well. Um, so if you guys haven't heard anything, then obviously that means that there has been no um, real interest as of yet, because I think that they would have come just based upon the communications, they would have come to like one of you two. Um, but it's it's worth- My personal- Something's worth a shot. Mm -hmm. My personal opinion is the board's made volunteering become quite unsavory. And so people are like not <laughs> gonna sign up for that because if they don't agree with it, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, yeah. I think that there's many reasons, but um, the fact of the matter is, is that we do need um, people to serve who, you know, have a passion and, and want to yep. continue to like help their community. So um, I don't know if, if, if it came down to like one person, like actually resigning, like I hate to say this, Jen, but I'm less important than you are <laughs> on this committee. <laughs> I just like, no, I mean, it's, it's true. I don't have all of the residual knowledge. You've been on this committee for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Like that capital plan you just sent out, I'd have no idea where, where to go to get that. Like, yep. so I just, and you've just been more involved with a lot of the work that has been done on this committee. Yep. Um, you know, I've only been on for a year. You've been on for how many years? So you just have yep a lot more of the knowledge um, than what I have. So you just are more of a value add um, than I am. So I think I would probably be the one or who should be the one until we find somebody um, to put in my resignation. I'm fine with that. I think that's fine. Um, and then we wanted we can to get to like one open, yeah. Yeah. And I think for me, I think the big thing is, is like, I mean, we're like the, I know we're gonna talk about the dog park also next, but between the dog park and potentially Choate, like we need people who want to get involved and help run those projects because that, that's going to be a lot of work to help uh, Travis with. So yeah. yeah. Did Tim do anything in the past to help recruiters that um, like anything we can do on the rec side? I know I'm new, but I'm happy to do whatever we can do to help. Yeah. I mean, like I, it can't hurt. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I think, uh, so when I was putting yeah, out the yeah. communication for like the recreation positions, I had sent it and I think Christina had posted it on Facebook, but through the rec Facebook page, if you have any other avenues like that, yeah. um, that kind of get, can get the message out there. I don't know. Um, I, I, I think the fall brochure just came out, right? Yeah, we it just we just released it um, yesterday. Okay, so um, we can't put it in there, but like any other like newsletters or any other ways that you guys like kind well, of blast information out to the community, it, it might it's be a, helpful. It's a digital guide we can always add, so I can I can go back to them and say we're gonna we need to add a like a little ad on there saying we're looking for commissioners, so we can do that. I mean, a lot of people are gonna be looking at that in the coming days and weeks. So that would actually be really nice if we could. Yeah, I can do that. Do that tomorrow. Awesome. Thank you. The um, youth soccer annual coaches meeting is like the lead this Sunday night. That's where we roped in. We're done. <laughs> um, so we can make a spiel at that as well. That could be good too, Kristen, especially if we're going to start talking about turf again. It might be good to have somebody excited and passionate about that that wants to go down that path with us. That's a good, good call. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So dog park update. Dog park update. Um, so I, I've had some conversations with Jen. Um, I had a really good meeting with uh, Bill McDowell from uh, DPW and just trying to get some context some history. I know there's been some work done and a lot of work done um, on Tim and the commission's behalf. Um, so we're just getting caught up um, with DPW. I know there's a missing certificate that everybody's talked about that everybody's looking for on the town side. Um, Bill had some more context to add. Um, he had um, the geo, I'm getting a um, landfill um, schooling over the last two months that I didn't know I was going to get till I got here, but I got it. 
Um, there's a geosynthetic clay liner that um, they used to, as a cover for the landfill that we have here in Southboro that is not permitted uh, to be used anymore. Um, and the certificate everybody's looking for is a construction quality assurance. Uh, it's just a certificate um, assuring that um, to the DEP that it's good to go. And um, we could potentially put a dog park and, and have everything ready to go for next step. Um, and it would trigger like a, a change of use, which would be a dog park. Um, right now it's just general use with field use. Um, so I think, um, Bill had some concerns over, um, changing the use from general use to dog park might trigger looking the state, looking for that certificate, um, that we don't have, um, or nobody can locate, um, which would the state, um, would have to do some boreholes to make sure that the liner is still working. And Bill has some serious concerns that if you start doing that, um, what that comes back with. And obviously, there's some serious implications if that came back and the liner had failed, then you're talking about millions of dollars to redo that liner. Um, th and again, this is Bill's fairly new. I'm new. This is from the DPW director. Um, I, I think I think maybe sitting down with him and maybe the design. I know there's been a lot of work might help. Uh, but that's the feedback I've gotten from the DPW director that I wanted to share with the commission um, tonight and get their feedback on next steps um, as well. Um, Jen, is there anything else that I forgot? I think. Um, I think my only, the only other thing in my question was, is that I believe it was also par par. Like yeah. there was a study done on this thing, like three or four years ago that said that yeah. the cap was fine. Yeah. So I guess I my thought is like, we've already poked at this bear a couple of yeah. years ago and we were told it was fine. Yeah. So I think the question is, is like, is that, is that still good enough? Can we yeah. use that to go yeah. get our certificate? Is there or such a thing is, is there such a thing as a use? Didn't Karen Gallagher. I'm sorry. Say it again. Uh, all I was saying was, is uh, you mentioned or uh, the, the concern about the change of use from general yeah. field to dog park, like, it's I he he said he's making that up. <laughs> he's not making that up. It, apparently, with landfills, once you change the use, and again, you can change. But, he, but is it not? Is not a dog park? Yeah. Like, is there That's actually probably, a use dog park on their list that it have to be changed to? I I I, I he said you probably you probably won't you won't, you probably won't get a change of use. Um, I, I I but knowing my luck, um, who knows that if you change it from field use to dog park. Maybe that could trigger the state asking for a CQA. I'm, I'm just questioning whether you even need to change the use. I mean, like oh, at no. two thirds of the two thirds of the of, of the location will not even be, uh, yeah. you know, impacted, right? And so, or 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 sixty percent, whatever the fraction of the the split is. And so, you know, uh, I could appreciate if we were ch changing the use to a swimming pool or yeah. like re residential to commercial to industrial, but like the thought that um you know i mean go go out there it's already a dog park like it's just not declared one so like yeah I, is he now is this is this um is this the same is this the person that replaced karen jen or did we go yeah. through another one yeah okay nope. yeah, yeah. So didn't, what did we wait so long what was karen doing for like remember we were waiting forever from one of the i don't know if it was the state environmental agency yeah. or whatever i thought to do all this yeah, we did. And that's what, like, that's a study that we have in hand somewhere. Probably could look at it in Tim's files um, that Karen did get. And that's what I'm referencing because back then we were told it was okay because we were talking about, like, could we level it? Could we put fix the field up there? And that's what we were told, right. yes, that we could and we'd be okay. So, and that's more disruptive than what we want to 100%. do now with the dog parks. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it, it's really interesting. They, when I poured through the whole um, landfill documents, it seemed like towards the tail end, I don't know if the, the work um, got a little mixed up, but it, it, he found it very unique that the DEP wouldn't have um, a, like a, a CQA that said that's common practice every, every they should have a copy of it. Um, and it was kind of weird or odd yeah. that they didn't um, and the town doesn't. So it's just, it's just unique uh, and odd. So I'd yeah. So it's like, yeah. So we're stuck. So I guess my, my thought here is that like, I, um, I know that the grant extended one year, so we've got like 18 months, you yeah. know, and I would hate to miss out on a quarter million dollars of free money. Um, 
So well, I guess my question to, we don't have 18 months because we we'd have to take this to the next town, the annual town meeting, not this was a special one, but I think we'd have to be in line for April. So I don't think if the town's not giving us any money, we don't need to go to the town. I think the if, if I I think if we we have to double check the grant language, but I think the grant says you need to have um, we've got that. We already got it this town meeting, previous okay, so one. We're good for the whole thing. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So that's why, like, if we, this is where, and I, I don't, I'm sure DPW is busy, but like my, my brain is saying we need to go get a new certificate on that, on the Lundblad field to allow us to use it. If we, if we can't produce, like it's been a year and a half, we haven't produced a certificate. We need to go get a new one. And I, I mean, yeah, it will trigger a bunch of, they're going to come out, they're going to look at it, they're going to test it or whatever to be able to give a certificate. But even if it fails, like, shouldn't we know that? Like yeah. if it fails and we just can't use it, which we're basically not using it today. But if we could get the certificate, we could finish this grant and have a dog park up there. That's yeah, the other, the other part of this, John, too, is, is like, who, who are we working with at the state? Like, you know, can, can, you know, is there not like a, conversation that can occur to say hey what do we have to do to make this work like nobody wants to like uh get to the scenario that we heard where it's like oh no the cover you're gonna have to retouch yeah. the whole thing and, the, and now we're taking more fields offline and you want millions of dollars to redo the whole like no, who nobody wants that like yeah. um and and yeah. the work that would be done isn't going to uh it specifically like it, we like it because it doesn't require or or, or yeah. jeopardize the the going to resurface it is a lot more invasive than it uh just simply uh, uh what we were planning to do for the park so and there's got to be it, it, i mean i could be wrong it's state government or it's government in general there's no rational practical people they all they don't <laughs> go into that those fields but like honestly like is there someone who is just like look this is the way to make this work or uh... yeah i mean i I'm, I'm happy to call dep and see where i get with it uh and then press uh bill Moore to try to see if we can get a certificate um for that field because that's the yeah. only thing that seems to be the big hold up i mean if you had that certificate yeah. then we're, we're golden well i'd be curious uh -huh. as to who did the to your point jen who did that last check for us and did yeah, we that was, some, did we hire someone to help us do that? Yeah, we did. I'm pretty sure. So it was through DPW. It was Karen led it. I think it was Par because that's who she had okay. a contract with. Okay. So there was a whole study done by Par. Yeah. So Par has to have some people that they know. Yes, they should be able to. We should be able to get them to push this through for us. Can, can even just to like talk to a few people and say, hey, what's the right you know, file, file the TPS 72 or whatever, and that will help you get it through. Like somebody must know how you got to know how to get it done. Yeah. Like, we don't know how to get it done is our issue. Yeah. I can't think of, I went down a wormhole to try to figure out even other locations that were a possibility that we would need to wait for this to hold us up. And I can't think of yeah. Liberty was one. And then you have the neighborhood right there, but there's no parking. No, we've done the, this is one, this is yeah. another one of those, Travis, where we've yeah. looked at everything we got and yeah. it was like, boom, this is the <laughs> one. <laughs> it's, there's not a lot of, uh, you know, unfortunately, much of our open space is consumed by the three uh, yeah. nonprofits. So it, we're, we're left with, you know, limited options yeah. Uh, yeah. otherwise, you know. No, it's great. Um, so I, I can definitely start um i can i can go down those channels and try to figure that out too i just want to keep everybody up to up to speed that's all because i know that that's a tight timeline um yeah. and i'm gonna i'm gonna press as as fast as i can and try to get it done because i would hate to leave money on the table as well yeah and uh joe is now the uh moving from he actually is the arlington rec director that joe stanton is uh joe conley is the recreation rep for um, the Stanton Grant, um, Stanton Foundation, and he is now the Andover Recreation Director. So he actually wears two different hats. Um, he's the kind of the municipal rep for the Stan Stanton Foundation. So um, he's been great, though. Um, I know him through the rec world, um, and he'll help us out with whatever we need. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see if DEP, I'll meet with Bill, I'll see, I'll, I'll try to contact Par again to figure out um, what we can get done. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Um, all right, we're almost done. So, Kristen, yeah, did you? Late meeting, everybody. 
No, it's okay. We haven't, we haven't met for a while. Kristen, did you have any updates on the field use refugees? I know you were looking to see if they had any sort of like licensing or insurance. Um, yeah, so um, it's not a shocker that uh, we're having a hard time getting a response from the agencies. Um, I was warned that that might be the case. I mean, they're all in a hotel, so there's got to be insurance, but I'm just, and again, I, I'm not trying to discredit them, but, you know, it's, it's, I'm sure we're not dealing with a very robust, you know, agency. So um, I guess maybe a brainstorm that I had, but I, I, I don't know what the possibilities are. I just, these are people who, all right, let me go back on video. I just got back. So um, just really brief background in case not everyone was there, but this summer I've been working over at Hotel well, Extended Stay America, which is the hotel right on like Route 9, right on the South Road border where that restaurant closed. And there's multiple agencies that are bringing families in legally who are refugees who are resettling in the United States. And they're from all over, like Afghanistan, obviously, but um, George, I mean, all over Africa, um, El Salvador, lots of kids, lots of younger people. So I started working with them. I work with, uh, well, it doesn't even matter, but um, they're cooped up in this hotel and, and they're waiting, right, to get placed somewhere in Worcester. And, you know, if anyone's ever interested, if it's mind boggling and interesting stories. When I raised the question my first day, I'm like, what are you guys doing for recreation? Like, do you do you get out anywhere? They have a small little patch of grass in the back, like small, small, small. They don't. And when I said, would, would people be interested in playing soccer or playing volleyball, people went nuts, right? Like, especially when you think about some of these countries that they come from where football, you know, as they would call it, is huge. So excited. And volleyball, too, actually got a lot of interest. So, so excited. Um, so I said, all right, well, let me see what I can do. And we talked about it, I think, briefly at a meeting. Um so, you know, knowing that field, I I think we, I'm sorry, hold on. What? Can I text you? Okay, sorry. Um, so knowing that, I, I went through this at one point in time when we had COVID, actually, I think, and insurance, I think, was a consideration. So I asked, you know, do we have insurance? I haven't gotten an answer yet. What I'd really love to just do is find two slots a week. And I know it's difficult in the fall to say, hey, guys, you have field time. We've got the rides coming from what, whatever time to whatever time so they can get out there and just get some recreation. Um, they, they, I, I can't express enough how difficult it is when you see these little kids with nothing to do. And, and even, again, the adults were pretty excited by it. I, I haven't seen them that animated about it and, I, you know, the possibility – beyond anything you know that I've since I've been working with them so I don't know what the answer is like again I know it's I could pick them up and just hope and drop them at a field sometime which I actually have offered to do I'm like hey if some you know that this weekend was supposed to be nice I'm like if somebody just wants to get out let me know I think it'd be much more successful if we said you know this time this time and this time you know is when we can get you out on a field to go do whatever i'm not even suggesting we organize anything it's you know they can organize whatever pickup game they want to play but it's just um you know these are people new to our country and our community and recreation obviously we all feel passionate about the importance of it so i'm just trying to figure out what we can do we um outside of field use me and christina we're going to go through our our rec closet and there's definitely a lot of old balls and odds and ends and stuff awesome. like that that we could possibly donate to them that were all rec uh, funded purchase so um i think once we do that i think we're going to do that once uh, fall starts um in september we could possibly donate so they could have some rec supplies that's awesome because I, I, you know, having coached all these years, I have a lot of soccer balls around the house. And so that's it. I, you know, I usually bring one with me. I go on Thursdays, actually. I was there today and I always grab a soccer ball and these kids, they're psyched, right? Like they don't even have, they have nothing. I, I can't stress that enough. And these are people, again, I, sorry, I won't go off on a tangent, but, you know, these are people who came from lives, like in some of them fairly successful lives and nice houses. And now they're here and like literally have nothing. It's it's mind blowing. And so, so Kristen, whatever we can do. So Kristen, I know that. Oh, so uh, there's 
multiple people who are always posting on Southboro Sobo Parent Sharing and Care for donations. Um, I think a lot of people in our community donate like a lot of stuff. Um, through that, like, can we just ask them to add to add recreation gear? Because I know a lot of people yeah. in our community are already donating yeah. a ton of stuff. Like, I'm sure if people have like extra balls, like if I knew that kids needed extra balls, I would, I would donate. Um, yeah. But above and beyond that, like, um, do the, do these people have um, um, transportation? Most so, of them don't because, again, the, the like, for example, I'm literally going next week and, and sitting in the car with someone while he learns he, he's got his permit, but his friend can't drive him because he's only had his license less than a year. I mean, even them getting driving is difficult. So we have volunteers driving. That's not yeah. a problem. Um, it's just literally a place for them to go because the play, at the hotel, there's not there's no space for them to do recreation. So I'm wondering if that's like one of the things is just almost providing like um, a transportation time just to like, yep. not even if like, I don't know, if we have like field time to give them, but I'm sure this, these kids yeah. would love to just like go to a playground yep. and find like a exactly. big grassy open like field. Like it doesn't actually have to be a field. Yeah, okay. Depending on the ages of the kids, like, and I don't think you would need, they're just people going to like a playground, right? Like anybody can go to a playground. Can't, mm -hmm. can't they just be transported to like, if, if, the, if the real issue, because I'm sure that the parents themselves, if they could transport their kids to a playground, they would. So is the real yeah. issue like transportation just to go to like a playground or go to like some sort of recreation area so that their kids can do something outside of the hotel? So is the real issue the transportation? No, honestly, because they there are a lot of great people bringing the kids like once a week to the library or a couple times okay. a week to the library. I think the transportation it's more like in the kids sure are going to playgrounds great, but like we've got you know adults who want to play soccer. You know they they come from cultures where where soccer football is is huge, right? Or cricket even. So you um, want to facilitate really like a rec league for like the adults. We, I don't want to facilitate the league. I just want to give them, like, a proper field. Got it. You know what I mean? Like, cricket, they yeah. they use all the time. I live right by Finn. And so, mm -hmm. I'll text you in one second. Actually, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, guys. Hold on for one second. <laughs> well, I think the, the challenge was, is, like, it was more, she was looking to be, like, can we get the field for an hour a week? Can we? And, like, and I think the thought is, like, from a rec perspective, we would potentially support like not charging them a fee right giving okay. them access Got but it. to reserve the field we the town take on liability that we require everyone that reserves fields for stuff like that to show proof mm -hmm. of insurance and that's okay. where we got caught because i don't we don't want to get ourselves in a sticky situation right if something were to happen to anyone while they're playing on a reserve time slot and we didn't have their insurance certificate mm. That has been a problem in the past. So that was where, like, mm -hmm. we just want to be careful about the fine line of what we do versus okay. following the rules that protect exactly. us. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, they're right. Jen said it all. There was an incident a few years ago. And, and so, but again, it's, it's such a catch 22 because these people are trying to become citizens so they can get all the insurance. I know they have insurance somehow because they're in this hotel. I just cannot get this agency. They're, they're just bouncing it, you know, all amongst themselves. So that's where I'm at. You know, I rattle their cage every few days. They haven't said no. Again, I, they're in a hotel. So well, obviously actually, there's got to be something. You know what, Kristen, I was just thinking, so I've hosted a completely different idea for you. I've hosted events before where I needed insurance to cover our group and didn't have it. And I could buy like a day pass for like 80 bucks. Oh. So I wonder if you guys like as volunteers could like buy a rider off something and, and do something like that instead, right? Or get people to donate towards that cause, but you might be able to just skip them and find like a a one day pass or something like that that you could just buy. But, yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, no, we'll find we'll find field time. We'll make it work somewhere. Um, I don't it know really how. is bad influence. I, I like that idea, Jen. I'll look into it. And again, I got to rattle their cage. I think now 
what I'll do is I'll leverage the fact that we met tonight. I'll be like, hey, guys, we've got this all ready to go. You guys just need to, to give me your information, um, you know, and that might actually be, you know, poke the bear a little bit. Okay. Good stuff. Cool. All right. Last thing on the agenda. So I was curious. Uh, I didn't know, Travis, if you had had any updates on the Fayville parking question. So for the commission, this came up in the spring questions about parking at that Fayville Hall building and whether or not we were allowed to, I think select board was dealing with it, but I didn't know if we had any updates. I unfortunately do not. Okay. I okay. can certainly poke more. Okay. Or just asked. I'd just be curious to know what's going on. I don't, we do not want to be involved, but it impacts us. So would like to know where that stands. Yeah. Cool. All right. Anything else anyone has to raise? I hope everybody, I go, I hope I can see everybody at summer nights on Saturday. Yes. Good weather. Good weather. Awesome. Perfect weather. All righty. What's the parking situation? Sorry, Jen. What's I no. missed the last summer nights. What's the parking deal lately for that? Uh, so it's, you're obviously going to park at the middle school or near, uh, but other than that, they have 225. What is it? Turnpike, uh, road is the, mm -hmm. uh, that's the, basically the access lot. Um, that's where we're sending people. So it's either don't those, let those... Anyone, don't let anyone park in our fields, Travis. But yeah, it's oh, true. God, I'm going to try not to believe me. No, no, no. There's a no, like they used to park in the fields. There's a, it's a no, oh, really? no with the S. So you like, so they park um, in the tree. Yes. Oh, really? yeah. Andrew, yes. Andrew, Andrew, I'm pretty sure Andrew from DPW would have my head if I if if I did. 100. percent Just make sure nobody Good. like that. That's no, the, not at all. Lie down on the ground, right? <laughs> <laughs> human, yes. human, human fence. Yeah. No, I'm not. Andrew, yeah. Andrew would literally like. I think he'd chase me Good. down on Monday. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Yeah, they did that before we invested it. So now we make sure nobody parks on that field ever again. No, so. he works. I, I saw him there today uh, mowing, and um, I he's. Yeah, I know he works very hard to make sure those fields look good. I wouldn't do that to him. That'd just be mean. Nice. <laughs> and I wouldn't do that to the field. That's just that would that wouldn't make for uh, soccer. Wouldn't be happy with me either. Cool. That was Ready? one of the promises you had to yes. make. <laughs> <laughs> yes all right so then i'll make a motion to adjourn at 8 43 second all right so roll call vote hansen yes okay yes we'll vote yes dumont yes Steiner, yes all righty thanks everyone. um i'll talk to you guys later good night Bye. oh did you want to schedule the next one is that where you're going jen Oh, I yeah. was, but I didn't know if I was going to be losing people already. No, no, we're still here. Go ahead. Sorry, I was saying we're still here. Quickly. We were quick to close it. Okay, so can we grab calendars real quick? Yeah. It's a little hard without... Uh, I'll do my best, but without sports schedules, we literally have sports every day of the week. <laughs> awesome. Um, We want to... <laughs> Tuesday the tenth, seven o'clock. I have nothing. I'm wide open. Okay. Sounds good to me right now. All right, so I will hold that for us then. Alrighty, thanks guys. Good night. Bye. 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 Good night. Good night. All right.